Should you freeze your eggs? It's a topic around the water cooler every day and amongst office blocks around the whole of Australia, but particularly here in Melbourne. I'm Dr. Joseph Scroy, an obstetrician, gynaecologist, and also a fertility specialist with Melbourne IVF. A lot of women are contemplating freezing their eggs, and just like the contraceptive pill, it gives women an opportunity to control their fertility. Certainly the big revolution of the 1970s and 80s allowed women to delay their fertility by commencing the combined oral contraceptive pill. And nowadays, of course, the opportunity to freeze your eggs gives you the opportunity in the future to utilise those eggs in order to become pregnant. I always say to women, it's best to contemplate pregnancy when you're physically, financially, socially, emotionally and medically ready to do so. And of course, with today's demands on your lifestyle, uh, there's obviously an element of delay in terms of when you're wanting to become pregnant. And that may be because you've not met the right partner, it might be because you're not in the right financial place, or alternatively, your career goals and ambitions are sort of allowing you to concentrate on that before you concentrate on family life. So the question is often asked of us as fertility specialists, when is the best time to freeze your eggs? Well, of course, the best time is as soon as you possibly can, uh, from the perspective of not only yourself, but also to give yourself the best opportunity of using those eggs at a later stage. We know that women under the age of 35, if they freeze their eggs, they need around 20 eggs frozen to give them around about a 90% chance that one of those eggs will turn into an embryo. And as a woman ages, of course, the quality of her eggs will diminish. And so we know that therefore you'll need more eggs in order to potentially give you that same opportunity. So at the age of 37, you'll need approximately 30 eggs. And by the time you're 38, you'll need 40 eggs. So certainly the opportunity to freeze your eggs should be considered before the age of 35. And it should be a decision that's made uh, because you're wanting, as I said before, to delay your, your, your fertility and, and give yourself an opportunity of utilizing those eggs at another, at another point in time. Now, if you're a woman and at the age of 35 you freeze those 20 eggs, as I said, there's a 90% chance of pregnancy. If you're 37 and you're only able to uh, uh, collect 20 eggs, then the chance of pregnancy is around 75%. And at the age of 38, freezing around 20 eggs will give you a 70% chance of pregnancy. So the more eggs we have, the more likely those eggs will be, create, be able to be fertilised and therefore create embryos, and the greater the chance of being able to conceive through the utilisation of one of those eggs. Now, the whole process of egg freezing might seem onerous or a big complicated uh, cycle in terms of IVF, but in actual fact, it's relatively simple. The first step is obviously making an appointment with your general practitioner so that you can discuss a little bit about your desires with respect to fertility and then having a referral made to one of any of Melbourne IVF's 30 odd specialists where we can all talk to you about the different methods and in way, in, in ways in which we would optimise the chances of being able to collect eggs for you. Now that will be a detailed thorough history and also an examination as a doctor will also ensure that you've got adequate ovarian reserves by doing an ultrasound scan to check how many follicles are on the ovaries. And the follicles on the ovaries are a little bit like eggshells. So we wanna see how many eggshells are within the ovary. And then subsequent to that, We'll also undertake some blood tests in order to determine more specifically your underlying ovarian reserve. Now, once you've completed the initial assessment and you're happy to go ahead with the egg freezing process, then it's a matter of commencing medication. Now, if any of you have seen your ovaries on an ultrasound, they have little, little cysts on them. We call them actually follicles. They're not little cysts, they're little follicles. And those follicles represent the number of eggs in the ovaries at that particular time. So some women with polycystic ovarian syndrome will have multiple little follicles sitting within their ovaries, and other women may only have four or five. Now obviously the more follicles you have in the ovaries, the better opportunity that we're able to stimulate those ovaries to collect eggs. Now I always liken the little follicles as if they're a seedling sitting in a flower box. So if you imagine you've got around about five to eight little seedlings sitting in a flower box, your brain secretes a hormone which is called follicle stimulating hormone. And that's a little bit like fertilizer for these little sunflower seedlings. So we give this fertilizer in order to grow the sunflower seedlings and we grow all of them in one hit and we're able to collect them.
Now, what happens in nature is you have a hormone called follicle stimulating hormone, which stimulates one of the little follicles within your ovary to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And that suppresses the growth of the other little follicles. So in humans and in nature, we only wanna ovulate one egg at a particular time. But when we're doing IVF, or when we're doing the process of egg collection through an egg freeze, we're actually giving super physiological doses of FSH, which is almost like giving super doses of fertilizer and a hydroponic system for all those little sunflower seedlings. And those sunflower seedlings will all grow up into a big bunch of little sunflowers. We do exactly the same when, we get, when we're doing an ovarian stimulation cycle. We're giving super physiological doses of that FSH and we get, we're growing all those follicles all in one hit. So in other words, if you've got 10 or 15 follicles there, we're hoping to get around about 10 eggs. And then those eggs are subsequently fertilised. One of the biggest, biggest concerns women have is if we're removing those 10 follicles, does that mean that I'm gonna reach menopause earlier? And the answer to that question is no. In actual fact, those follicles that we rescue effectively by giving the super fertilizer or the high doses of FSH, the, uh, the super physiological doses of FSH, were always destined to die. And the only way, that the, 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 what we've done is we've actually rescued them and been able to collect them and place them in an internal capsule by freezing them. Now, of course, once they're frozen, those eggs can be used at any point in time. In actual fact, can be used up until the age of 52. And, and then when you are ready then to become pregnant, what we'll do is we will thaw those eggs out. Now, some women will choose to thaw those eggs out with their, their partner or alternatively decide to enter into a donor, donor sperm cycle. Either way, once the eggs uh, are, th are thawed, we will then inseminate them by a process of ICSI, which is intracytoplasmic sperm injection, where we get the sperm directly and fertilize them uh, by placing the sperm directly into the egg. And then we wait approximately five days until those eggs have developed into embryos and then subsequently become embryos suitable for a transfer into the uterus. Now, of course, the whole process of egg freezing really just stops at the time of collection. So when, we, when you commence your cycle through an egg stimulation cycle, what happens is you report when your first day of your period is. And then you're going to undertake a few injections that occur from day three of your menstrual cycle. They're very small injections that you inject underneath the skin in the tummy. And then over the course of the next 10 days or so, you'll have a series of ultrasound scans where us as fertility specialists will look how that follicle stimulating hormone, that super fertilizer for your ovaries, is growing those follicles. And once we can see that there is enough eggs for us to collect, we'll initiate the process of being able to collect those eggs by using a special injection called a trigger injection. Some 40 hours later then, or 37 hours later then, you'll head into our East Melbourne Day Surgery Centre where we go and collect those eggs. And the way that we do that is we do an internal ultrasound scan, much as the ultrasound scans that you'll have had done during your cycle, and we pass a fine needle from the vagina into the ovary to collect the eggs. It's a painless procedure. You're given some light sedation. And of course, at the end of the operation, you may experience just a little bit of cramping and of course, some uh, blood loss, but that's about it. Most women through the cycle of their egg freezing will actually go to work normally as they would do. Most, if not all of us as fertility specialists do our ultrasound scans before you start work at nine o'clock. So for myself personally, I start work at 7 a.m. and I see a lot of my patients prior to them needing to go to work. So it doesn't disrupt the daily routine of life. The only day really that you need off for the egg collection is the day of the egg collection. And so that's the day that you actually come into the hospital and have the anaesthetic. And on that particular day, it's a day to have an opportunity to really rest more than anything else once you've had the eggs collected. You'll need someone to look after you after you've had the anaesthetic so that, um, of course, you, um, you're monitored whilst you, you've had a, 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 some light sedation uh, after the anaesthetic that you've had at the East Melbourne Day Surgical Hospital. Then it's really important to reflect on how many eggs we've got. So every, woman's is, every woman is different and every woman's cycle is different. So in some cases, one cycle you may collect, uh, you know, six to 10 eggs and in other cycles you may collect 10 to 15 eggs. Every woman is different and every woman's cycle is different. So 
Ultimately, that magical number of around 20 eggs for a woman less than the age of 35 is quite often achievable either through two or possibly three cycles of ovarian stimulation. And some women may be fortunate and be able to collect all those eggs in one batch. But nonetheless, once you've collected those eggs, then a refresher, another review with your fertility specialist is important to lay the foundations of whether you do need to have another stimulation cycle. And then it's a matter of just living life, doing everything that you're wanting to do until you're ready to contemplate pregnancy again and coming back and seeing us at Melbourne IVF to commence treatment and to continue your fertility journey. I hope you found that video really informative. If you want to see any more fertility topics, please hit the subscribe button below. Alternatively, leave your comments in the comments section. And more importantly, if you want to make an appointment with any one of our Melbourne IVF doctors, please visit our website.